Y'all, please give one more round of applause. That was amazing. It was beautiful. All right, all right. Um, I don't know if my words will be able to do you justice, but I'm going to try uh, to give you the best introduction I can. Um, over the course of her career, Chairwoman Tremaine Wright has repeatedly demonstrated her unwavering commitment to advocacy, advocacy work, constantly trying and striving to drive forward policies to benefit her community. From her time as Chairwoman of Brooklyn Community Board 3, to her years representing the 56th District in the New York State Assembly, Chairwoman Wright has developed a wealth of experience in government. Her robust knowledge has enabled her to lead the Cannabis Control Board within the Office of Cannabis Management to achieve several key milestones in a very short amount of time. In less than a year and a half since the passage of the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act, New York has taken tremendous steps towards setting up its adult use cannabis marketplace. The state has driven forward a first-in-the-nation approach to award the first retail dispensary licenses exclusively to individuals and their families who have been most impacted, negative, who have been most negatively impacted by the war on drugs, while also setting up the framework for how the industry will look and feel through the passage of regulations. Under Chairwoman Wright's leadership, the board has issued over 250 total conditional licenses for cultivation and for processing, helping to kickstart the adult use supply chain. Simultaneously, the board has reinforced New York's commitment to serving its medical cannabis community, updating several aspects of the medical program to improve accessibility for patients at the same time. As with any structure, this will undoubtedly be, there will undoubtedly be many aspects that will need to be addressed to ensure that New York achieves its goal of a successful and equitable adult use cannabis industry. But we can all be confident that with Chairwoman Wright at the wheel, New York is headed in the right direction. So please, please help me welcome Chairwoman Tremaine Wright. Thank you so much. So just as an FYI, he gave you the update. That was part of my speech. So we're going to change all of that. Um, but good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for having me here today. I'm going to tell you, I absolutely love the opportunity to be in this space, to feel the excitement, to see the energy surrounding the, the development. Because that's exactly where we're at right now. It's still in the development stage of what cannabis is going to look like here in New York State. I'm going to tell you, we're moving fast. There's a lot going on. And hold on one second. I'm about to pull up notes. There we go. And it, this is what's going to really drive what this looks like. So we're working on the minutia at this point. We're talking about regulations. We're trying to figure out how you're going to report and how we're going to um, issue applications. But when I walk around and I get to talk to people and we get to determine what we're going to do in this space. And it doesn't look like what was done yesterday. And people are talking about new ideas and new experiences with it. This is what warms our heart. This is what gives us moving and keeps us excited. Um, and really keeps the office and the entire team moving forward. Because we want to see this industry blossom and bloom in New York State. And your creativity, ingenuity, your resourcefulness, that's what's going to take us there. Because think about it. We've only been at this for 11 months. Last year, this time, New York State had cannabis law because our legislature had passed and enacted the MRTA, our Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act, on March, in March 2021. But the agency nor the board had been appointed yet at this time last year. It's going to be another month before I even have my first year's um, anniversary of being appointed by our governor, um, Governor Hochul. She stepped into office and immediately supported, established the, the systems necessary, including the appointment to the board and to the OCM, the leadership for, those two inst for that institution. And then got the legislature to round it out and fulfill the rest, full the rest of the board, which allowed us to just get the institution up and running. That is 11 months ago. And so much has happened since then. Um, I'm just going to say, we are super, I'm going to say, we were excited that we've been able to work on regulations 
that we have been able to connect with community, that we have even gotten a legislature to pass additional legislation that has jump-started everything for us, including the Seating Opportunity Initiative. But I just want to bring you back up to speed because there's been a couple of things that we're really proud of and the work that we're doing. Because while everybody said, go get it done and get it done fast, we were hesitant and we weren't sure if we were doing it the right way or if we were approaching it. Granted, New York has the benefit of having watched other states, many of whom we've learned lessons from. And so we've been able to structure ourselves differently. But I'm going to say, since the governor did all of the her, what she was supposed to do within weeks of taking office, the OCM and the Cannabis Control Board have been really making strides so that we can try to get dispensaries open here in New York State by the end of this year. Yeah. Yes, yes, by the end of this year. So, but I'm going to say, in addition to us doing the work of regulations and trying to get dispensaries open, we've also, as already was uh, mentioned, we've expanded access to the state's medical program. We're implementing changes that were originally planned for in the MRTA. We are offering flour at our medical dispensaries, We've that which lowers the cost for access. And most importantly, I'm going to say is, we have enabled practitioners to make determinations on which patients should be using medical marijuana products. That is, we don't want you stuck to some predetermined list. We don't want it to be arbitrary. We really do want this to become part of the conversation of healthcare in New York State. And we thought this was probably the best and most effective way for us to begin to empower our physicians and to expand the conversation into the medical circles so that people are really starting to develop language that supports health care and wellness in association with cannabis. I also want to say that we officially lost, um, launched our cannabinoid hemp program. We instituted some consumer protections as well as set up some guidelines for that industry. We have already issued about 3,500 CBD retail licenses in New York State. However, I do want to speak to this group in particular. A CBD retail license in New York State is $250, $250, and it is a registration, not even a license. I expect the number to grow exponentially. I expect many more of you who are in this room that have ideas and are planning to carry THC to also carry CBD. I expect that you will help us to fill out that vocabulary for our consumers so that they know and understand how the two interact and you will be going online to get your CBD registration, if not today, but tomorrow after the event. Because we really do need to see that part of the, of the industry flourish, because I think that that will be part of our conversation points as we grow a wellness market here in New York State. So we need you to participate, we need you to be there, and we think that that was the first step by regulating it and to make sure that the price point for entry was extremely reasonable. So make sure that you become a part of that and make sure that you're at the table helping us to grow that part of the industry. It, use, it helps our consumers to build a vocabulary around this plant so that they start to know and understand some things that they can expect and they can help to demystify it and really normalize it in the conversations. And then I'm also going to bring us to the equity goals of New York State, because that's exactly what our MRTA was based in, equity and inclusion. It guides us, and it has been guide. It's been our guiding light for the work that we've been doing thus far in this state. And I'm going to say we are really happy to have learned from mistakes of others. Um, to not even I mean, I'm going to say mistakes. But we to have been able to learn from the attempts that other states have made. And I'm going to say we have used their guidance, the guidance of their work, to shape ours. That's how we ended up with a 50% benchmark for all licensing across all license types in New York State. We want to see that go to what I'm going to call our social equity applicants. Those are our applicants who are businesses that are women 
minorities, service disabled veterans, and it also captures those applicants who come from communities that have been disproportionately harmed by the enforcement of marijuana prohibition. So we know that we want to have 50% of licenses across all types go to these types of businesses and to really grow the industry. And I want to remind everyone in this moment, I say it every time I have an, a microphone pushed in front of me, we are not at a moment of scarcity in New York State. This is a moment of opportunity. There are no limits on the number of licenses. The limitation that exists is your ingenuity and your creativity. Get your ideas together, and we need you to come forth with your ideas and the, uh, the request for the license so that you can help us to grow this industry. And that is going to get us to our 50%. So please, when we talk about equity, and we talk about, you don't have to have an equity partner to get your license. You have to have a good idea. You've got to have the will to make that idea come to fruition. And that's what we want to see in New York State. So we don't want to see the predatory actions that we've seen in some other places where people are creating partnerships that are not partnerships. We don't want to see people just thinking they have to bring somebody along. You have to come together and create an industry for New York State that is going to wow the rest of this nation. We need you to set the example. Because I promise you, everybody is watching New York State. Everybody wants to see what we're going to produce next. And while we say we have 50% set aside, not I shouldn't say set aside, a 50% goal, that means that we're going to be doing things to help support businesses. And I should probably look at my notes because I actually did have a, a frame of thought and I'm going offline. Um, but I'm going to say we are trying to figure out a way that we support people across every license type in this state. We have been very fortunate that our, I'm going to drop this, but our... Um, legislature just passed the Seating Opportunity Initiative. So in addition to us being able to improve and enhance our medical program, to improve and roll out and launch a cannabinoid hemp program, we have the Seating Opportunity Initiative. That has allowed us to issue licenses to existing New York farmers to grow the first crops of adult use cannabis within this state. Many of them are still sitting on hemp products that they have not been able to sell. That market crashed under their feet and we're using cannabis to help restore our farmers through across this state. About two or three weeks ago, I, along with other board members and members of the OCM, had opportunity to travel from Buffalo all the way back to the Hudson Valley and stop at farms along the way. These farmers are committed and dedicated to growing for a tremendous product. I had the opportunity to stop and smell the flowers. And I'm telling you, they were smelling good. They are committed. They're using sustainable practices. They are involved and they are committed to making sure that they produce jobs in their communities. We had farmers that have just started to design better employee benefit packages because of the infusion of the cannabis, of the introduction of cannabis to their production cycle. That's what we want to see across this state. And over 200 of our farmers, mostly small family businesses, have licenses to grow cannabis in this state. And they will be produced. That's right. You should clap for them because their harvest is coming in. Some of them are putting the second set of seeds in, or plants in the ground. And they are going to be producing the products that are going to our newly licensed processors. Just on August 15th, we issued the first 15 processing licenses to existing hemp processors so that they can help us to get the, that raw material into the forms so that they're ready to go on the shelves for our conditional retail dispensary licensees. That is coming down the pipeline. Our conditional processors, it's 15th thus far. We expect there to be more. We expect them to produce everything from edibles and tinctures and vape cartridges, as well as a host of other products that we know consumers will be looking for. Because we're opening the applications for our retail dispensaries on August 25th. That is the day, it is this week. We are extremely excited. This is going to close the loop, or I should say, link it, the supply chain together, so that we actually have 
cannabis operations in New York State before the end of the year. And our retail dispensary licensees will be supported by the $200 million loan fund that Governor Hochul introduced in her budget, I'm sorry, introduced in her budget plan and passed in this year's budget. So that fund is going to support hopefully 150 to 200 retail operations across this state. The first ones we plan to open, these are going to be licensees who come from the community of people that have been convicted for marijuana offenses during the prohibition. These are also people who have operated business, successful businesses. So these are people who have already committed themselves to community. These are people who come with a skill set to operate successful businesses. And these are the people who are going to be model citizens and model businesses for everyone else in the pipeline who will be talking with us next year when the rest of the applications open up. Because these folks are going to help us get cannabis off the ground. So when we bring in the new year, I want everybody to bring it in with a little bit of New York cannabis. <laughs> That's what, we're, that's what we're aiming for. And because this is our opportunity not only to open some businesses, but these businesses, the sales from these businesses and these people who have been harmed by the prohibition on cannabis, they're going to be building the revenue that we use to reinvest in communities across the state. Communities have been harmed. And you can define the harm in health care, divestment, crime, arrests. There's so many different ways to define the harm that the cannabis prohibition did to our state. We are taking our steps, and those of you in this room are helping us to build the economic engine. That's going to be part of the repair. That, those revenue dollars will be reinvested through our advisory committee and our community reinvestment plan so that they can support initiatives across this state to improve education, research, as well as community-led events and projects. So we still have a lot to do. We will be rolling out I'm sorry, regulations throughout the end of this year. We hope to have the complete package before the um, public before the end of this year so that we can approve them. So that when we open up next 2023, we're ready to go straight to applications and opening businesses. But there's a lot for us to do but we don't want people to be discouraged. We just want you to stay connected with us. Already, I've had at least three conversations about some of the regulations that are out, and people are sending in their comments. I'm challenging everyone in this room to please go on our website, cannabis.ny.gov, take a look at our proposed regulations, you are the practitioners, you are the entrepreneurs, you are the innovators. You can see the things that we miss because you have, the, you have the insight to know how these things are going to operate day to day and we need to hear from you. These, your comments are important, they are incorporated, we, they are necessary because we want to come, we definitely want an industry that is going to be thriving and we want all of you to be a part of it. But we also want you to help us to shape it. Because the last thing we want is for us to be making changes in year two or three. We want to get it right out the gate. We think that we're on the right track. We need you to help us stay the course. And so I'm excited to be a part of this. I'm looking forward to hearing the rest of the expo speakers. I am looking forward to chatting with you during the dinner and the reception at the end of the um, event. And I also just want to say thank you to Gary for pulling this together and making sure that we have an ongoing cannabis conversation, that people are building vocabulary, normalizing the product, and making sure that we're building the culture together. Thank you.